Hello everyone, uh, true northers and new subscribers, new watchers, welcome. This is Mary and today we are talking about what you should expect during your first therapeutic session. My name is Mukuria. It will be a kind of a Q&A. Um, so Mary, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Great. Yeah. So say for the reasons... Um, of my mental wellness, be it my desire to improve my emotional health mm -hmm. or to grow my emotional intelligence mm -hmm. or something has happened and I feel like I'm unbalanced or somebody has made an observation that I should seek psychological help. Mm -hmm. What is it that I should expect during my first session? So if you've already made contact with a therapist, Okay, having been true North fans, you already know some clinical psychologists, some psychologists. So when you do have your first session, there are some things that are common to all therapists on the first day. And one of those things is that you're going to get you meet your therapist for the first time, and the therapist is going to meet you for the first time. And in that first interaction, there's going to be some expectations from you as a client. There's going to be some expectations from the therapist about your relationship. So one of the things that you're going to do in the beginning is get to know each other on a professional level from the therapist and you in terms of what brings you to therapy on the first day. So you might find the therapist asking you, so what brings you here today? And then you can tell them, you know, there's some things that people have been saying they've noticed about me, and therefore, can you help me? And this is how I've been feeling, this is how I've been behaving, these are the things I'm thinking. And then the therapist will get to let you know about their working process, how they do things. And from there, if you feel that you're comfortable working with them, then you'll agree on things like time, how many times in the week you're going to meet. Usually, most therapy sessions will be once a week. But depending on the need, it can sometimes be twice a week. But no more than that, because you also want to go home and think about the things you've talked about, apply some of the things that you've talked about in therapy. So more than twice a week would not be helpful unless it's a crisis. Um, yeah, so that is in a nutshell what you would expect from a first therapy session. It's usually introductions, expectations, how much will it cost, uh, what is your mode of payment, uh, and the therapist will let you know about things like confidentiality, that they won't talk about the things you talk about in your session with anyone else, other than in a situation where uh, you express that you feel that you're, you're feeling you're having thoughts of you're, you're having thoughts of wanting to harm somebody, or you want to harm yourself, or your some a, ha a child is being harmed where you are, where you live. Um, so those kinds of things maybe the therapist will not be able to keep confidential and then the other thing is uh, the therapist may also have a supervisor who supports the therapist so maybe sometimes the therapist will bring up not you as a person but the issues that the therapist also may need assistance in helping you so they might share those issues with their, with their supervisor. But your confidentiality is still maintained. Now, I also do want to say here that as a client, you want to seek out high professionalism from your therapist. So there are some things that you can look out for when you go for your first session. One of the things can be where is this therapist meeting me? Is this place safe? Do I feel that it's safe? Is it a quiet place? Is there a level of 
privacy that is maintained you know there is a door you can close so that you can be able to just be the two of you and discuss some issues uh, is it um, clean is the is the therapist treating you in a manner that makes you feel safe is the therapist treating you in a manner that makes you not in a in a manner that is not exploitative where you don't feel like they're just uh, you know seeing you because they are looking after money that you feel that they are actually caring about your well-being so tr you know here you can just uh, trust your own instincts of safety yeah and what about the things that worry people about, like the person seeing me? Mm -hmm. As a new client, as somebody who doesn't know much about the profession, mm -hmm. how do I know that the person I am going to see for therapeutic help is competent mm -hmm. to practice their trade? That's a very good question. Um, one of the things that ends up happening is that People do not know what psycho psychologists do and therefore they don't know what to expect from a psychologist. So one of the things you may want to do is to know the different uh, um, associations. There are associations that psychologists belong to. So there are several like uh, we belong to Kenya Psychological Association so and the offices for Kenya Psychological Association are based in um, Halingam so you can look up Kenya Psychological Association on online find their offices go there or give them a call and, t and ask them I'm looking for a mm -hmm. therapist and I saw this therapist that I was interested in and I want to know if they are part of your organization or part of your association why because when a psychologist belongs to an association that means that the association has vetted their credibility the association has access to their academic training they have access to their former supervisors they have some knowledge of this person's professional experience so that means that when you're picking that psychologist, they are actually credible and that whatever services you will receive from them, you can be able to feel comfortable that you're not being exploited. And if you, are, if you do feel exploited, there's actually people who you can let know that um, you know, you're, you're not feeling good about this particular psychologist and they can support you either to refer you to somebody else or even uh, to, to let the psychologist know that you did not feel comfortable with their services. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty phenomenal. So you've talked about the Kenya Psychological Association. Mm -hmm. Are there other associations that people need to be aware of and they can look up? Because what you're saying is so important in the sense that... Um, I think there doesn't seem to be any other way to do this vetting mm -hmm. um, because of course we saw last month the president um, did not sign off on the counselors and psychologists bill mm -hmm. uh, he sent it back for some amendments to be made and therefore that means that every process that was riding on him signing the counselors and psychologists bill into law have collapsed so there's no board uh, which is essentially supposed to oversee regulation and uh, enforcement and supervision and registration and all those things um, but what I know is that it's not all in limbo so we have the Kenya Psychological Association which other association should people uh, rely on as a dependable one or ones um, okay, so there's several. I think there are about four or five. There's one for psychologists who are in academia. That means that uh, these are psychologists who are the ones teaching in universities. There's also another one called the Kenya 
Counselors and Psychologists Association, KCPA. And I think there's also another one called uh, Kenya Counselors, Kenya, mm, Kenya Counselors Association. And I think there's one other one. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. But any time that you are going to have services from a psychologist, they need to be uh, an, a member of any one of those institutions. They need to tell you which institution they belong to and then you take that information and you put it against the association they belong to. You can call and find out if they're a member and what is their, you know, you can even get to know what what is the feedback that has been received uh, to uh, which feedback has been given about them uh, that kind of thing you can be able to ask some questions just to um, clarify the kind of person you're getting into a relationship with because this is about your mental health so you don't want to give up your mental health to just anybody um, yes the same way that we also need to get into the habit of looking out for our you know looking at the backgrounds of our doctors our dentists the people who interact with our bodies and who are able to change our bodies in some way um, it's important it's important for us to be able to find out who they are and where they get their credentials yeah wow that's great mm -hmm. And um, I think it's very good information in as far as what uh, a new client should expect, um, what their responsibilities are, and most importantly, the important um, introductory points that they should look out for in terms of the credibility of their caregiver. Um, I think the other question is, okay, now I know what to expect, I've gotten into the process. During that first session, is duration also discussed? Frequency is discussed, mm -hmm. but is duration also discussed? Yes, duration of the session is also discussed. Um, internationally, most sessions will run somewhere between 45 minutes and an hour and 15 minutes. However, psychologists are also trained in cultural sensitivity for example here in africa we grew up many of us grew up in rural areas where storytelling is very important it's part of the culture and it it, it, it can also almost be considered rude to rush somebody through their their talking you know if they're trying to tell you something important so we also look at uh, cultural sensitivity and balance that with also ethical practices and what has been done um, internationally and what is considered the, 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 the best duration of time for a session. I wouldn't go past an hour and a half for an individual session uh that is because it 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 when it passes the one and a half hour mark it begins to deteriorate in terms of its productivity and its uh help it, 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 like for it being helpful for you so you, and also taking on you know information that is more than an hour and a half long in a therapy session is a bit much because some sessions can be quite heavy in terms of emotional expression, in terms of what they provoke in the client, and therefore more than an hour and a half would be too much. Yeah, so I'd give the maximum of a session an hour and a half. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. What about how long the treatment plan takes? Is it possible to have that locked down in the first session where you tell me I'll see you for a month or three months or six months or one year or two years or five years? Is it possible for that to happen? Should that be a realistic expectation that clients should have when they first come um, for the first session? Another very good question. Um, so 
therapy is dynamic and what i mean by that is that it's very difficult to agree on everything in one day and that is actually a good thing because you can't really agree on everything on the first day but you can have a framework on the first day for example the therapist might say wow okay whatever it is you bring today doesn't sound like we can be able to talk about in just today alone this means that we may have to go on for a few more sessions but what you can do with your therapist is to reevaluate your progress it can be every two sessions it can be every four sessions depending on what you agree on but on a on a rolling basis you will be able to reevaluate how much time this will take and the reason this happens is because as you keep talking with your therapist you realize a lot of things come up and a lot of things come out that you had never thought about before or things that you had uh, you know buried in your mind and just kind of moved on with your life but they are affecting your current situation so you might find you may need to unfold a few things so you may agree as you go on how long the sessions may take um so it's not something that is cast in stone at okay. at, at all so essentially yeah. it is totally dependent on the progress of the sessions but also the mutual understanding and agreement between the caregiver uh, who is a therapist and the client yes okay very mm -hmm. good mm -hmm. i think that covers it mm -hmm. and most people who we have been talking about are adults what should a person who is under 18 mm -hmm. expect when they come for a therapeutic session and we know that um, mostly they will come because the parent has brought them, they have expressed the desire to see um, somebody professional, mm -hmm. um, or they have been sent by the school. What should the parents of those children expect? And what should the children expect during the first session that has not been mentioned in the first conversation okay so um depending on the age of the child uh let's say this is a teenager uh teenagers are in an interesting stage where they are trying to you know get their independence but at the same time, they are still children. But also the parents are trying to experiment with the decision making for the teenagers. So the teenager is trying to learn how to make their own decisions. And therefore, they may need to, they may insist on having confidentiality. That means they may insist on coming for therapy by themselves. But at the end of the day, it still needs to be signed off by their parent or guardian. They cannot by themselves come for therapy. They still need to come with the knowledge of their caregiver, of their, either their parent or a guardian. If in the case of a smaller child, they may come with their parent into the therapy session, into the therapy space reason being sometimes small children may feel difficulty in being alone with a stranger who they've just met so it's important for a person they trust like a parent to be there with them and also to help make the decisions on behalf of the child who is too young to make decisions on their own for example on is this the right therapist um do i feel okay here uh, how long will this last children are unable to make such decisions so it might be the case that their parent will be with them in the session and um, this is also important for the therapist because the therapist gets to meet the people who the child is interacting with at home 
Therefore, the things that the therapist and the child do in the session can be replicated at home uh, so that the behavior can begin to change and, and so that the, 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 the child can begin to move on in terms of whatever it is that uh, brought them to therapy in the first place. Okay. Yeah. That sounds um, pretty concise. Um, I think it's very clear what to expect during the first session, whether somebody is an adult, an adolescent, or a child, and how to feel that the session has met um, ethical standards and uh, professional standards. Mm -hmm. So, unless you have something else you need to add? Uh, you've mentioned something very important. Mm -hmm. Ethical standards are very important in healthcare. Right. Any kind of healthcare that we are trying to uh, acquire or get, you know, any assistance that is for our health, it is very important to make sure that you're not only looking out to save some money, but you're looking to see somebody who is properly trained and who is ethical and who will treat you with the utmost respect that you deserve and who will give you the freedom to make a decision whether you want to continue with them or you want to go somewhere else and try somebody else. This person will give you the respect that you deserve. So for me, I feel that um, respect and ethical practice is crucial if we are to have better mental health yeah okay very good thank you mary for all those insights we hope that uh, for you watching and listening this has been fruitful and useful to you of course all this information is to ensure that um you have the right information as you make the decision to cater to your mental health Remember, you don't have to have a nervous, a nervous breakdown or a psychotic episode or just have the complete and total inability to live your life in order to seek professional help. Think of yourself as an engine. All engines after a certain number of kilometers must go for service. You're not an exception. So we hope to see you come in for service very soon. Thank you all. Like, subscribe, share. Say bye, Mary. Bye.